It's the 4th of July in 1977. John and Jean Block board their 1969 white and green single engine Cessna 150J in preparation to fly from a small airport in Macomb, Michigan to the Lost Creek Sky Ranch Airport in Luzerne, Michigan. Their approximate departure was 11.05 a.m. Their approximate arrival would have been between early and mid-afternoon. Sadly, John and Gene Block never landed at Lost Creek Sky Ranch in Luzerne, Michigan. And to this day, there has not been a credible sighting of John and Gene Block or their 1969 Cessna aircraft. Join us as we dive deep into the case and examine the facts. Follow us as we embark on pinpointed searches through Michigan's desolate swamps and vast forest. At the very least, help us spread the word of John and Gene Block so that their memory remains not forgotten. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Not Forgotten. Uh, glad you could be here. Uh, today's episode is going to be a good one for you. We uh, just got done with the discussion we had um, with uh, Patrick Richardson, uh, commercial pilot working with us, uh, Ross Richardson, uh, retired scuba diver working with us, uh, John Block, which is oh, it's John Block Jr., which is John Block Sr.'s son, and then Jenny Block, who would be John Block Sr.'s granddaughter, John Block Jr.'s daughter. And then us two, right? That was it. Tyler and Jeff, right? That's one. Yep. All right. Yep. So enjoy the video, guys. Glad you could join us again. And uh, thanks for watching. Yeah. Enjoy the show, guys. We'll see you in a few minutes. So I think, um, you know, just to let you know, we've all put in a lot of time on this and it's kind of become a, a labor of love. We, we talk about this every day. Wow. Uh, uh, numerous <laughs> times a day um, on Facebook Messenger. We have weekly meetings on Zoom that last either an hour or an hour and a half. Um, and during the week, it's not uncommon for us to pop on to a Zoom meeting for a half hour or whatever, just to have some informal conversation about what's going on. Okay. I, I, I am remiss of mentioning this now, but by now, there was that radio information where supposedly my dad was on the radio from Charlotte, yeah. Michigan to Civil Air Patrol, but they don't they don't monitor anything. And the other thing that I should have brought up uh, is that they were working on my dad becoming a Civil Air Patrol search and rescue and using the airplane, and he owned half of the airplane. The other half was owned by a Civil Air Patrol search and rescue guy. And we learned just within the last several months or year that one of the things they require out of the equipment that you use is that uh, you got to have a, the ELT. You talked about that. But no, did we tell them about the international orange wingtip? Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. With that mm -hmm. international orange, is that something that you, that you could spot some distance away and in, in the woods or along the river bank and stuff? That We're hoping so. Unusual, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah. Do you know if the entire wing, top and bottom, was painted, or was it just the bottom? No, just the tips, the wing tips, and the tail sections tip. Okay. 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 I never saw that in the photographs, and um, I'm going third hand, and I'm not even sure how we found that out. Do you, Jen? No, you guys said you found out at the at the after talking to the person that owned it yeah mm. I don't okay mean, all right hmm. okay but anyhow yeah so yeah we um we talk about this all the time uh and what we're using mainly is google earth so i'll bring that up and then i'll kind of step through the different layers we place on that and how we do it and why we do it that way so are, are you familiar with google earth at all john a, a little bit, yeah. Okay. In fact, I started playing with it, and if you you start out at a particular spot, like where they took off, yeah, you can actually with the with the joystick, kind of 
act like you're flying that path right along and uh, you know stranger things have happened where they've um, by now you know a lot of the stories about them finding bodies and cars and stuff yep that's the only way they they found them uh is google earth right yeah um is that the one with the plane that was or not the plane but the car that was in the swamp or the little uh pond yeah that i saw that one that's actually uh that was grand rapids wasn't it i don't remember there was one in Grand Rapids where the guy left um, Pete's, Pete's Tavern and never came home. And some some lady was analyzing the area and saw something in a pond and come to find out it was the guy that had <coughs> left. And all she saw was a square thing in a pond off Google Earth. Right. So. Right. I apologize for the dog. I have a puppy that's biting the power cord of the computer. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's <laughs> yeah, I got a I got a dog and a cat over here too. Yeah. <laughs> so what you see in front of you, I mean, this is clearly a map of Michigan. What we did is we started out by plotting all of the airports, right? So there's Macomb, Lost Creek, oh. and Charlotte. And then we kind of put together um the possible flight segments that they could have taken, uh -huh. right? So they could have gone from Detroit to Lost Creek, could have been Detroit to Charlotte to Lost Creek. It's hard to say, right? Um, right. I guess we kind of, we're, we're kind of starting to form our own uh, theories on that. Uh, we did talk with your brother. Correct. About the Charlotte thing. And I think we're all still kind of pondering that for a number of different reasons. I, I have my doubts about it. Um, yep. But, um, you know, that, that's a hard thing to do when it's so, the information is so important. Uh, and and the, um, I, I just don't know. And just to let you know for sure, um, the uh, Macomb Airport now is called, uh, what is it? R Ray or something, Ray Community Airport, and it's mm -hmm. named after the township there. So yeah. you start looking at Macomb Airport, you're not going to find it. Okay. Yeah. So, so right. Macomb Airport was basically bulldozed and it was turned into houses. So they may wow. have put a different airport there. Oh, the Macomb Airport is gone. And wow, stop. I didn't know. Oh, Ray, Ray Community Airport is what they call it. Yeah. So I don't know you say it's not in the same spot that the old airport they, was? They, they bulldozed the old airport. I'll, I'll show you here. Hold on. In the Lost Creek Sky Ranch oh. Resort building. Yeah, that's so, still there, I think, so, right? So here's Hertz Macomb, right? Here's the Detroit airport. Yeah. Yeah. But if you go forward now, so this was in April of 2002. That's March of 2005. So you can see that they got rid of the airport. Oh, my. And they would have found the airplane <clears throat> if it was short of the runway by yeah. a uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. mile or so. Or yeah, so that airport is no longer there. Oh. Um, and then this is. No, I didn't know that. This is the most recent. You can see it's all houses there. Wow. Yep. So the airport wow. is, is gone. But when we go back to these possible flight segments, right, we continue to think about the Charlotte part of the story and the comment that was made about your dad was apparently shocked. I think that was the word that was used. He was shocked when he found out he was in Charlotte. Yeah, and he, he's kind of the guy that, even though he made fire chief and was had a lot of common sense, one of the things he lacked is uh, his um, what would you want to call it? The f accepting from somebody that he was lost, and I think you heard that from my brother that you know if they're going 
from point A to point B, he'd, he'd be lost for a long time and he wouldn't stop and ask for help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where yeah. they were. So, right. Who knows? But so, yeah. I, we hate, we hate to pass up something and I hope I'm wrong. I hope, I hope we find it uh, in the woods off Charlotte Airport in Lansing area. That'd be, you know, I'd be ticked with that. Well, so, so here's why I think we're thinking that's probably not what happened. Um, because if you look at the terrain between Charlotte and let's call it Midland, okay. that's all heavily developed. It's mostly residential and commercial. Yeah, there's houses so, everywhere, yeah, farm fields. Yeah, in the process of that development, somebody would have found something. You would think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, that's, other, the other thing, not to interrupt you, but it was yep. on that um, state news, is that the Isabel County Indian Reservation, which is Mount in Pleasant. The Mount Pleasant, yep. just released uh, several thousand acres open to the public. Okay. That was one of the areas that uh, the one female, um, what do you call them? The psychic? Psychic thought that they were, and uh, in, in an area where the two two creeks run together, and yep. prior prior to this recent development um, on the Isabella Reservation, that would be one of those spots where uh, <coughs> the public weren't normally in there hunting or fishing or anything. Mm-hmm. So. Not like was heavily used and traveled. I guess sure. the Indians and we're, my family is part Native American, so I have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, between between the Charlotte Lansing area and say Mount Pleasant Midland, we're kind of thinking that's not likely. We think it's going to be definitely north of Mount Pleasant, um, and so this is kind of how we come up with our search area. Okay. So it's basically these nine counties. <clears throat> so let me figure out which ones these are. And if, if we if we search these heavily and we don't find anything, we are going to expand our search area. This is just right. where we think is the most plausible at the moment to start. Right. And if we don't find anything in these areas, then we're going to move out further. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. the way we're thinking too, like even if he went to Charlotte or he left, you know, he left from Macomb or went to Charlotte, whatever. His destination was still the same. He was still trying to get to Lazard. Correct. Correct. And he didn't call in to say, "Hey, I'm got, uh, you know, I'm not feeling well. I don't have, I have engine problems." We never did hear anything from him. Right. You no. Know? Right. And he couldn't fly at night because he didn't have the IFR uh, rating. Yep. So. So what we did is we drew some, we need to figure out like these targets, where are they in relationship to the destination airport, right? So what we do is we draw circles and we move out, right? So there's five miles from Lost Creek and then we can go 10 miles, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Wow. Wow. So that's kind of how we, we do our kind of like our search patterns. Yep. Yep. Now, I guess I think, you know, the next question is, well, how do you identify targets, right? Like how do you figure out what looks interesting on the map? And so what we do is we look at other crashes that we know positively were crashes. So one of them was this one that was, I think it was in the UP. Um, let me go to it. I think you can see right there in the middle that white blob. Yeah, yeah. That white dot. Yeah. So I can show you. Um, um, that one, Patrick, too. I think if you switch one more year back, it gets way more, way more bigger. One, I don't know if it's forward or backward, but one of the views opens it up a lot more. You might yeah. have to go back to another one. I think you. Another- I think it was there. I think the one he had might have been the one. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. Okay. Uh, that was wreckage, yeah. Wreckage oh. has since been removed, of course. 
Uh, no, I, I think most of it remained there because it's too it's too it's too much of a, a big deal to try to remove it, right? And so here are some pictures of what it looked like. Yeah, and you can see yeah. it was a pretty hard impact, right? So this is what we see on the ground, and this is all we see in the air, right? So unfortunately, when we say we're looking for a needle in a haystack, that is kind of what we're doing. However, the method that we're using, we think we've got a pretty good handle on it. So I let me, I, I'll show you what we're, what we're doing here. Um, we think this method of, of trying to find similar uh, targets in different areas and going to search those rather than just walking through the woods randomly is going to be a lot more effective to right. try to find it. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, well, I had lunch with Ross a couple of days ago and that's when he talked about that, um, um, drone with the, with the metal detector on it. Yep. But I, I don't think it's going to do a lot of good in it. It's like $25,000 mm. unless you go right over the top of it and say, yeah, here's a metal object down what? there somewhere. And then you'd still have to send people in on foot. Right. We're right. thinking, we're thinking something like that might be useful when we want to search maybe a large swamp. Cause it, cause you're not, even if an airplane crashes in a large swamp, a lot of times it's going to be difficult to see on Google Earth because the swamps have so much vegetation and algae and things like that, where if it's in the water, you're not going to be able to see it. So a magnetite, like the, what you're talking about, we think that's where that might come come in handy. And I, even though they are $25,000, maybe we can, we got enough pilots on our group that maybe we can find somebody who might have access to something where we can rent some time for something or, or something of like yeah. that nature. Yeah. Yep. Or ask somebody if they'll help us. I don't think it's going to do any good until you can get a, like several probable uh, crash sites. I mean, yeah. it's not going to do any good to search the whole lower peninsula, even with that equipment. Right, you know? right, right. I agree with that. <clears throat> so what we do, we have these circles and we look at these different targets that we've identified, right? So we have checked a few of them. Here's one of them, and this was one that they went out and looked at, right? Looks a bit similar, uh, but this is what what was found was not, it was just a rubbish pile. <laughs> so, And, and the, what sheriff department was it that found the Coleman camper, side of a Coleman camper, and they could have, they were, they swore up and down with the airplane. And that was like a couple of years ago. Yeah. In the area in question. It even had a spot that we thought maybe was like to fuel the wing. Hmm. And we took it to several places and we finally ended up going to the NMC's yep. pilot the college. academy college there that does the pilot. And they were like, nope, that's not a plane. Hmm. So, yeah. So it was in the same area as the camper side was found? Like well, that, it, was, it ended up being a camper side. Oh, side okay. Camper. Yeah, same yeah. case. Yeah, or same yeah. discovery. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So this was the first one that was checked. There was another one. This thing keeps changing on me, and I'm getting sick of it. That was a second target that was looked at and uh, Tyler and Jeff went in there and you said you didn't really, you didn't find anything essentially. No, we're, we're thinking that could have been maybe a, a large birch tree that fell down or something that was just showing a white, you know, silhouette yeah. on Google earth. Yeah. But we walked, we walked and checked that one. That one was about a mile and a half in the woods. It was about a two hour walk each way. So, and that, that there's a video on, on YouTube. So you may have actually seen that a little bit of that. Um, I don't know. I think you might've seen that, but. Um, yeah, it ended up being nothing, but it was something we could cross off the list. So we were happy we checked it. So, right. Pretty good. Yeah, I'm not really sure why that white little speck is there. Um, once okay. we reached the target there, I mean, we walked about 100 yards or 120 yards in each direction looking for this, and we didn't see nothing. So, I don't yeah. know if it's a glitch on Google Earth or if there was something there at one time and now it's gone. I have no idea what that is, but we didn't see nothing there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> 
And basically what we do when we search is we just take a, a GPS with us and we put the coordinates in and then we just walk out to the coordinates and walk all over the coordinates until we see or don't see something. <laughs> so, uh -huh. right. Well, you so, guys are getting some good exercise. Oh yeah, because them woods yeah. right, them woods right there, John. It's all hills, up and down. You know, hills and valleys. So you're going. It's it's definitely an exercise for sure. Yeah, my little hound dog is getting lots of exercise too. <laughs> we, had a, we had a little dash hound with us, and that little guy, he, he thinks he's Superman out there in the woods. But he was he was uh, tracking right along with us. Yeah. yeah. I want to bring you on my next hot dog run on a snowmobile because <laughs> we don't pack that kind of food in with us when we go. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. Our little cook out there. Yeah. <laughs> we we eat good when we go out. <laughs> cool. So this so there were two targets there that were not productive, but you know, it, it this whole exercise kind of operates on the same principle as that you would find, say, playing basketball or hockey, right? Like it, it's never going to go in unless you keep putting shots on goal. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you're never going to find it unless we keep identifying <laughs> targets and go out and look at. It. So that's kind of the principle here that we're operating. Yeah. Under. yeah. There are a bunch of other targets that we're planning on looking at, and we can plot all those out. There. Whoops. No, those are. There we go. So you can see there are quite a few more. There's, uh, let's see, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten more targets. Wow. Wow. And yep. uh, uh, just to kind of a, a, a side story, um, one of my last dives as a Detroit policeman, the Hamtramck, which is a neighboring city, had a uh, homicide. Guy, I think the guy shot his his wife, and then drove out to I don't know how familiar you are with the area. The Bill Isle is a park now. It's this, it's run by the state of Michigan now. There's a bridge that goes across it, and that's the favorite place where you want to dump bodies and evidence. So uh, we're doing this dive for Hamtramck PD, and uh, we're saying. Um, they're telling us he drove out to the middle of the Belle Isle Bridge. Um, it would, and it, and the, it's 30 feet from the middle of the Belle Isle Bridge to where he hit the water. And they said, okay, well, he shot his wife with the third round, 38 Smith and Wesson. And it should be, you should be able to find it within a few feet. And uh, so we dove on it and uh, spent an hour or two, brought up four or five handguns. <laughs> yeah. And uh, brought checked serial numbers and all that stuff. And none of them were the right gun. <coughs> so you never know. Yep, we'll keep looking though. So those are the targets that we've got. And then, you know, I think the next logical question is, well, how do you exclude things, right? Like there's, there has to be more than just excluding targets. Like how do you, how are you excluding entire areas? So what we were able to do with the power of Google earth here, it's surprising, you know, how much good stuff the government puts out there. <laughs> uh, we actually have a way to search individual townships and sections. Oh, wow. So I'll let this load up here and oh geez. Yeah. So we can actually look at townships and sections. And we'll take this grid off here in a second. But what we do, let me change this to manual so it won't keep refreshing, is we can go down pretty low level and search through these. Wow. And, I, and of course, you know by now that the satellite imagery uh, varies by yep. uh, where that uh, photograph was taken. Yep. If we were fooling around behind our house that we moved out of. And I'm looking at a two track because it was a favorite spot that our kids would take off in. And the camera was right over the top of this two track 
and you can see the details on the tire tread marks. Yeah. Hmm. And if you moved away another 50 or 100 feet, made quite a bit of difference. Yeah. Yeah, and usually what we try to do is get it in a year where there isn't so many leaves on the trees. So right. when we start um, going through time, because we want to get the best view of the area as possible. So like how Patrick's got it up there right now, there's like all the normal trees that are not um, the pines has got their leaves gone. We can see in there pretty well. <clears throat> and, I, and I think what Patrick's just trying to show you is basically we're not just randomly walking off into the woods in some random direction, hoping to come across the plane. Like everything that we search is a, a target that we have found and, right. and we're strategically going in after this. So it's, we're not just doing a broad swipe with like a paintbrush. So I, I think I think this is gonna work pretty well for us. We'll just, yeah. It's just gonna be a process of elimination. We'll just uh, keep grinding at her. I think this is the this is the best option for us right now. If we were to just go in blindly and start walking around, I mean, it would take centuries. Right. All right. So, so we'd never get it done. But I wanted to show you how we kind of how we exclude things here. So we can take and put on. We also have um, excluded regions. Right, so these are sections that have already been searched. Oh. And so uh, searched, you know, using Google Earth, right? And so people aren't going out and again, trying to review these. Um, we put polygons in place so we know that this has already been looked at. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so we have areas down here. We have areas up here. Oh, wow. And one of the first, you know, one of the first things we try to do is look for these very populated areas and exclude those right off the bat, because if they've been developed right in the process right. of that development and, you know, felling of trees, they would have found something. Yep. And so we want to get rid of those potential search areas so they don't, I guess, take up too much time and, and interfere with the other search areas that we think could be important. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You guys have got a very methodical method of doing this. Yeah. So beyond my understanding initially, that's for sure. Wow. Yeah. So that's kind of it for me. Uh, I, we just really, we wanted to kind of give you the lay of the land here, what the efforts have been so far, how we're doing this, how we're going about checking things off, assigning targets. Um, and things like that, you know, like I said, we we have weekly meetings uh, and, you know, we're on Messenger definitely every day going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth all day long. So this is uh, it's become somewhat of a part time job for me. And I love it. <laughs> yes, I, I love it. And I think, you know, with as much as uh, with much as much as as all of us talk on Messenger about this. You know, we're all putting in a lot of time on this. And so, you know, I know searches happened, you know, when something interesting came about, but I think if someone were to ask, what's the status of looking for your parents' airplane, I think it's safe to say that this is again, a very, very active search. Yes, yes. I would agree with that. Yeah, it's very active right now. As a matter of fact, uh, next weekend, we're planning on going back out. We're going to try to clear three of those um, targets that I think Patrick showed you. Uh -huh. and, um, we're going to keep clearing this stuff. And when we run out of stuff that's within 50 miles, we're going to expand it even more. And we're going to keep searching there. Yep. So well, I believe that we are going to find this plane. I don't know when, but I think we're right. going to find the plane. It, yeah, it's a big enough object you think eventually and once they <clears throat> went into deep water, which I still believe you wouldn't have done that, with the tricycle gear airplane, uh, yeah. you could be real careful because if you get that nose wheel down first, you're going to flip it and it's going to break apart and sink. Yep. So, and he, he knew that. And I was surprised he even bought into uh, something that wasn't uh, a tail, what they call a tail dragger or older airplane. Mm -hmm. you know? <clears throat> um, yep. And <clears throat> anything else we should ask about? 
Well, I just, I would definitely like to go with you guys this weekend. So I'm clear all yes. weekend. Okay. I think that would be really awesome well, for you yeah. to come off. Yeah. Hey, do you like rats? <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm trying to find out what we're going to pick for the, the next time. But, uh, but if you like brats, I mean, that's, I like brats too. Yep. Yep. Hey, so, I, I see, I see Ross is with us, but I, I we yeah. can't see him, but it looks like he's here. Um, Ross, if you can hear me, is there anything you wanted to chime in or anything so we don't let, glaze over you? Where's the picture of him? He doesn't have his picture up. He's yeah. just Ross should be at the bottom, but he's, he's, um, yeah. He's unmuted. Can't, can't he's he's unmuted now. Yep. That's all right. <clears throat> No He'll probably come on in a second. What do, what yeah. do you think, Jenny? Like, um, I mean, we. What are your thoughts on this whole thing? Like, uh, just what is what is your general I idea of everything here? You I, think? I think it's awesome how you guys are able to, you know, go back and forth with Google Earth and everything you could go and change the seasons like that. And, yeah. You know, and yeah. with any, you know, any grid, it's it's basically a grid search. And it basically, and that, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what you're doing. You're taught to do that. And I think it's a, it's awesome that you're able to do, like you said, change, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, yeah, I'm just, I'm still on that, that it's going to be a little bit, you know, south. But my brother and I were arguing the other night and he's like, nope, it's going to be within, he goes, it's going to be within 30 miles of that airport. So could be. Hey, it could be within 30 miles. It could be 60 miles. Yeah. Uh, we don't know, but I I don't know. Hey, John, yeah. you, you were talking about that radio call a little earlier before I think we were recording. I don't know if we were recording or not at that time, but um, do, you, do you have any idea or any kind of um, suspicion on where that call might have been made from, where he might have been during the time of that call at all? No, it's just that uh, it was the original equipment on that airplane, and the airplane was a few years old. So it wasn't a high tech, uh, long range uh, transmission, but you never know with, um, with radio signals uh, and, and what frequency the, the uh, radio is set at. Uh, Cause we, we would keep getting screwed up when I first moved up north here with uh we had the remember the old well people still have cb radials with long long yeah. big antenna on it and and uh so this um <clears throat> particular department and ours was one of the last ones to end up getting the what do you call it the 800 800 circle, yeah, yeah. So the point of bringing this up is that we would have to, uh, when we got a radio call and just instead of saying, uh, we'd say like white 51, we knew that meant Grand Traverse County Sheriff Patrol. Okay. But uh, we were listening to the guys in the deep south when the, uh, the cloud cover was just right. And uh, so we had to both start identifying our radio transmissions by more details. And one particular day, uh, we're listening to them and they said, well, yeah, we had a floater coming down the river just about now. And then, you know, you could tell the accent. And they said, well, where is he right now? And they said, well, he's by bypass shoot or whatever. And, they, and so the dispatcher said well geez he's almost out of the county line just go ahead and let her float down river and we'll report it to the next next county mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, but th i think those days are gone now yeah uh, i think everybody's got the high man with those radios in the because we were talking pat we were talking about that like i know even when i was first started in dispatch i would still get like 911 calls from Wisconsin and would those radios have done that <coughs> back then or no it would still be short short range those would be short wave radios they're, they're not the uh certainly not the UHF the ultra high frequency which is used by the military <coughs> the uh 
very high frequency. I think that was around, right? But the technology was still old. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to say old, but it wasn't it wasn't as modern as it is today. Yeah. No. Right. Especially with uh, the UHF receivers and transmitters, which today the technology is just better. Right. So I think when we were talking, Patrick, we were thinking that radio was going to be somewhere in between like 50 and 100 miles range, didn't we? Isn't that what we were thinking? Yeah, I heard 50 miles it from somebody. Yeah. So it depends on. Miles. Yeah. So uh, trans it's it's line of sight, right? So depends on how high you are um, and how far between the stations you're trying right. to make a call, right? Yeah. So you could be up at 15,000 feet, but are you able to call 400 miles ahead? It's hard to know, um, especially with the equipment that was in a Cessna 150 back then, probably wasn't state of the art at the time. No. So. No. For sure. Yeah. So, uh, well, and Ross and I are keeping track of other airplane crashes and where they were at and realized that it's several months, years or so. The last one that's most popular is the, the uh, uh, cheat. They were a husband and wife teacher. They left the St. Ignace Airport a couple of years ago. And uh, the de Department of Natural Resources was uh, clearing out the forest trails and found the airplane damn near hit uh, yeah. Castle Rock. That's and, the 89 uh, crash, Patrick. That, that's the that's the crash we showed you a few a little while ago there, uh, John. That's the one right there. Those pictures. That's oh. it. Oh, my. Yep, that's it. So and you can look. actually see that crash on Google Earth. Wow. Yep. Wow. Right there. And one thing, John, too, Patrick, if you could bring them pictures back up real quick. One thing that we were looking at, John, that we kind of were talking about is if you look at the pictures of it and you see the colors on the airplane, they're still really vivid. You know, yeah. they're not they're not faded. And that kind of gave us a little bit of hope that, you know, hopefully your the you know, your father's airplane, hopefully not in this bad a condition. But if we find it, hopefully the colors are, you know, they're not faded and they're still, you know, relatively vivid. So we'll still be able to see it from Google Earth or in the woods or whatnot. Right. Yeah, especially and, and, if it's got those, if it's true, they got the international orange wing wingtips on it. Right. If we see something white on Google Earth that has a little bit of orange at the end, oh man, that'll, that'll probably get our blood flowing because you know that, you know, that could be something. So, right. Right. That's right. So, other than that, I don't, I don't want to keep John on too long. I know he's. Is Ross able to talk now? I think he was trying to, but I think he might be having some audio difficulties. So okay. I'm, I'm sure he talks to John enough. He'll, he'll be able to ask him if he needs to, but. That's pretty cool. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Uh, can you hear me? We got gotcha. you. I, I can hear you, Ross. Yeah, I'm having uh, laptop problems, but uh, no, everything looks good. Um, yeah, I think we're heading in the right direction. I think we got uh, a good group here and yeah, that's Perfect. about it. John and I discussed it uh, a couple days ago. We had uh, lunch at Jenny's restaurant and yeah, good. build them in and, and I think we're heading in the right direction. Awesome. At Jenny's rest, Jenny, you've got a restaurant? Yeah, I don't, I don't own it. Nobody oh. wants to do that right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I run them, but not own them. Yeah. Yep. Nice. You could, you could have your own restaurant, and it could be called On the Block. Yes. Let's go. There you go. <laughs> and, you can, and, you'll, and you'll be, the, you can be the owner. And you'll be Jenny from the Block. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, one thing I want to mention is um, I think it was Landon talked about the five mile rule. I'm not sure the percentage of aircraft that are found within five miles of the airport they left or five miles of the airport they're going to. Does anybody remember the percentage? I, I don't remember on that one. I do remember him saying that now that you're bringing that up, but I don't remember the percentage. I'm sure yeah, we could probably google it real high high percentage though i think ross you brought it up you know like 50 60 percent or more 
uh, ends up being, you know, from where they took off from or where they were planning on landing. Yeah. Really yeah. high probability. Well, that, that validates starting at the airport in Luzerne and, and branching out from there because there's plenty of unexplored wilderness. And I think I, I was kind of surprised at just how unexplored some of that area is. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, this is good, good information we can only have by having boots on the ground. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And we cleared to three areas while we were just uh, on this, this call. So that's kind of how this whole thing works. But it definitely, it you know, it takes a village. We have a lot of skill sets involved with this, and it seems like every time we have a call, I learn something. Yeah. So I think we're we're very fortunate to to have yeah. that depth and breadth of knowledge from a lot of different subject areas. Yeah. One thing that keeps stays in my mind too is whether he went to Charlotte or not, whether that radio call came in or not we all know his destination was still the same. He was still trying to go to Luzerne. So right. that, that's definitely going to help us. I mean, and I think where we're, uh, we're expanding, we start within 50 miles of Luzerne, you know, 10, 20, 30, we clear that entire area, which might take a couple months. Who knows how long it's going to take us. Yeah. We don't find nothing there. We expand it even farther. Yeah. And it's definitely a swampy area. When they first come up missing, we go out in our, rear wheel drive car and got get stuck a lot driving through the swamp you know and that was an immediate uh flight path of uh, the landing pattern for for lost creek so yeah yep. if we yeah. if we if sorry uh if we find something in the swamp my dad's got an airboat uh john and i think he'd be happy to let us uh take us on a trip out there if we need to go search something so Wow. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I still say we send Josh in with a wetsuit first just to let him get wet, but <laughs> our, our son, son, her brother. Yeah. yeah. I got some uh, good video of him coming out of that swamp and going down <laughs> on his hands and knees and begging for a beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was hurt. Those guys, they went in there about you know quarter mile and oh yep. <laughs> he wanted a beer huh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> first thing he asked for <laughs> that's funny all right well does uh anybody have any anything else they want to get off their chest are we in good shape or what yeah i just want to add on the uh magnetometer is a little different from a metal detector a magnetometer detects uh changes in the magnetic field and it has a much wider range, so it can see to the side. It can see around concentrically more than just looking down. Okay. So that's just we'll just do our research over the winter. I mean, it's nothing we we can do till the spring. But if it's if it's feasible, which I don't even know if it is yet, you know, you could fly it over a swamp area, run a search pattern, program it right into the drone. And see if there's yeah. any any type of hits out there because it would be rare that something would be out there either a snowmobile left in the winter maybe or something but you know mm. yeah any, any metal in there is going to be rare and also it could be used in the future for flying over uh forested areas in a search pattern and be able yeah. to detect you know uh, 500 feet in any direction and then okay if we got a hit we know you know, so it's just something, just something to research and look into. I don't know the the cost yet, and and you know how good they are. Sure. It's kind of sounded like a like a fish finder or something, huh, Ross? Where it kind of goes down and, and out a little bit. Well, so it, yeah, yeah, it's it's it detects where a where a metal detector is more directional, like straight underneath it. This uh, is more searching around. We used some of it looking for uh, for shipwrecks and, and missing aircraft in the water. But the um, oil and gas uses them to look for certain mineral deposits. And most of Michigan has been magnetometer surveyed, or most of the Great Lakes have been. And they've actually found shipwrecks using the uh, geological services data and being able to go out in the water and find uh, magnetic anomalies. So that's kind of, that's kind of it. As you, I, I don't know the range that's on a small unit that we could mount on a, 
on a drone, but I know they use them mounted in the front of aircraft to, you know, do large, right. large areas. So, wow, you know, as technology improves with sonar and gets cheaper, I think the same thing with the mag, it's going to get cheaper. So we'll just, we'll just research it. I mean, it could be a, a good tool to send over a square mile, a really tough forest to search and see if there's anything magnetic in there. Right. Yeah. That's you know, a great idea. At the, at the future. And while you keep looking, um, keep in mind that the department I just re retired, well, just retired from, we still have the open case on Jimmy Hoffa because he was last seen up in, uh, in the Detroit area. Detroit. So, and uh, so he flew from Detroit and jumped out of the plane or something, I heard? <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. That was D.D. <laughs> Cooper. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Add him to the list. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's for sure. That's a whole other discussion. He he died in the jump. Yeah. A lot yep. of people think he lived. He didn't survive the jump. So we're actually looking for a missing person, not uh, not one of the 50 suspects they, they have out there. Didn't yep. people find some money or something that like flew well, off? In the bank of a river that was dredged uh, after he jumped out of the plane. So um, the money was found a few miles down from the flight path where it crossed the mm. Columbia River. I mean, the Columbia is half a mile, a mile wide. And mm. they found this money in an area that was dredged. So the money ended up in the river. Well, chances are he did too. And that's why he was never uh, found. <coughs> yeah. I can see that's that. a whole other discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, how are you feeling? Uh, better, better than I look. Um, I'm in and out of the uh, doctor's offices a lot, but it's uh, I've got a pacemaker and defibrillator and one eye left, and uh, I could go on and on. But uh, overall, am I in a lot of pain? Uh, no. Good. Um, yeah. Nice. So, I should last a couple more weeks at least. A couple more <laughs> weeks. We better get started then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Sure. Yeah. And Ross. You're welcome. Also. A absolutely. So. All right. That's all, that's all we've got. The I think the recording will go up, but like I said, we wanted to update you guys first before we put this on the page. So. All right. Thank yep. you so much, All guys. Right. All right. Guys. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye. Yeah, we'll see us. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. Just a quick little video of us uh, updating uh, John Block and showing them how we're searching and letting them know that the search is continuing and just trying to, uh, you know, raise the spirits a little bit in, in a sense, I guess, and just kind of update them and let them know what's going on. Obviously, you can you can see he's uh, he's getting a little older in age and his, and his health is not as great he as looks he like. Yeah, but, he looked nice and comfy tonight. Yeah, he looked comfy, but he, obviously his health isn't exactly where he would want it to be. But he said he, he feels good and, and everything like good, that. So, so so hopefully we can we can get some answers for him before too long. That that would be ideal. So, anything so, else you want to run past him or? No, thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you again next time. We'll have another episode here in a couple of days. So yeah, look at look out for there. uh look out for an update video. We'll have something like that here coming in the next few days. We're just trying to get stuff recorded and other things happen as we're going with it. So anyhow. That's it, guys. Take it easy. Thanks, Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.